Okay. Hello, pray and share warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? According to my computer, I am eight minutes late. And I shoved the time back 30 minutes so it wouldn't be late. So, I don't know. This has not been my favorite day. But you know what? I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to share Psalm 20 with you tonight. And uh, that may be all I share though. Because I've kind of... I kind of need to get off of here quickly. So, uh, let me get my Bible. I've been working again today, so all my Bible stuff is all different places because I've needed my desk area for work. All right, and I went and got my old office chair out of Seth's room and Oh, I love it because I can work like this. I guess I'm just going to keep it. And I thought about buying me another one, and I don't know. I don't know. All right, Psalms 20. Of course, I don't have anything in there. Oh, my. I don't know what Seth is watching. He's been watching Amazon all day. Okay, Psalm 20. Psalm 20 is pretty... Um, I may read Matthew 6, actually. No, 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 no. Luke 6, which is parallel to Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount. But it's a little bit different, so we might read it tonight. God, we just come to you and we just praise you, God, for all the many things that you do for us, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God, and your truth never changes, God. It never wavers. It's always the same. God, we just thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. I need more strength today, God, but you tell me that this thing that's bothering me, you have. So, God, I trust you. I trust you totally. God, you're magnificent and powerful and mighty, <clears throat> and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. God, you're caring and loving and compassionate and trustworthy and faithful God you are patient you want none to perish God thank you for loving me thank you for calling us as your children God and in Jesus name we pray amen but I have more that I want to add I don't know why I closed my prayer help me to focus God help the Holy Spirit to speak through me God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to see where they are and to come back to you, God, to ask for repentance of their sins, God, and to have their re relationship reconciled by you, for you to make it new, God. We pray for our country, God, we just pray for our country to be united once again. We pray for unity under the love of Jesus, the banner of love of Jesus. We pray for a Jesus movement that can't be stopped, that starts in our country and goes throughout the world, God. We just pray for truth. We pray for truth to rise above all the lies and confusion that is out there, God. There is such a spirit of confusion. I felt it so so heavily in my spirit this morning is that this spirit of confusion is causing a lot of people to be hurt. So God, I just pray for this spirit of confusion to go away, God, and for it to be replaced with your spirit of truth, God, because your truth will reign forever and ever, and that's all that matters. 
all the lies, all the confusion, they are not going to last. They are temporary, God, because they are not of you. They are not of you, and they are of the evil. And the evil will be defeated by Jesus. Jesus will defeat all evil. And God, we just pray. We pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. We just pray that you would meet the needs of these people, that they would see the love and compassion of Jesus, the hands and feet of Jesus, that they will be the ones that come and help these people. God, we just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength, God. And as I scrolled through Facebook this afternoon, I saw so many needs of illness, God, and surgery and just all kinds of things, God. I just lift all those things up to you. God, you know every little detail in the situation. And uh, I can't remember the names, but God, you know them and you know their families. And I just pray for healing for them, for speedy recovery if they have had surgery and for a, um, and for just strength, God, as they heal. And God, we just thank you. I thank you for all the many things that you do for me. I thank you for all of the blessings that you have placed in my life. As family or friends, God, I just thank you. And I just pray that you would keep every one of them safe. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Pray and share, warriors. Let's dive into Psalms tonight. Let's dive in. We don't dive in to prayer anymore. Because I just got to thinking that that just wasn't very reverent. So I may read to you my daily devotional today. It was really good too. I just haven't quite decided. I had a really strange day. I got a lot of what I needed to get done. I went and got groceries. But it's just been a strange day with um, strange occurrences. Okay, Psalm 20, the assurances of God's, the assurance of God's saving work. To the chief musician, a Psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord set up our banners. We need to all be under the banner of love of Jesus. That needs to be our banner, the love of Jesus. And the truth of God needs to be our banner too. Um, I lost my place. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, may the King answer us when we call. So let's break this down a little bit. Well, let's go, let's go to my study part. I forget why I'm using this Bible. It's, it's so heavy. But with this chair, I have armrests, which are great because I used to rest on my desk. The King's Knee for the assurance of God's presence, perhaps when preparing for battle, in the theme of this psalm, the prayer included a plea for safety, power, and victory. The name of the God of Jacob is a reminder of God's deliverance of Jacob in his time of distress. Names are important in identification and relationships. Naming the children, chart, names of God. God does not grant every desire of our hearts, but neither does he withhold the desire of our hearts when they are in tune with his purposes. Oh, amen. I needed to hear that. He does not 
He does not deny us the desire of our hearts unless they don't line up with what he wants for us. Wow. With his purposes, his plan and purpose. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to read Matthew 6 after all. I forgot that I did a song share today. I'm going to read that because I talked about some of this. I talked about some of God's plan and purposes and that sometimes we miss it. When we are following what we want to do, when we are going our own way, which reminds me of that song, you can go your own way. We can go our own way, but we are not going to receive the blessings of God when we do. If we want the blessings of God, if we want the, um, if we want to know what God's plan and purpose is for our life, we have to follow his ways. We cannot have it both ways. There is not a way to have it both ways. You have to choose which path you want to be on. And that's really hard. And it's a hard truth. But it is true. You have to choose. We are all called to choose. We are all called to choose. We cannot live in the world and live for God at the same time. We have to choose which side we want to be on. And the rewards of living for the world are not a lot at all. And very temporary and fleeting. Okay, so this is my share. Day five of praying for our nation today, praying against the spirit of confusion in our country that is preying on our younger generations and for unity under Jesus and truth. So that's what I'm praying for today. And I've, I have been praying for truth for weeks, believing that truth is going to spill forth, that things that we have been told that are not true are going to come to pass, that the truth will come out. You know, the truth always comes out. People can lie, they can hide things, they can, the truth always comes out and the truth is always better than a lie. Day five of my sugar fast. I'm doing good. I'm holding in there. I went to Dairy Queen today and got Seth a milkshake and I didn't get me an ice cream cone. I didn't get me, uh, I got me a crispy chicken salad, which, you know, I haven't had one in a long time. It was just nearly as good as an ice cream cone. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm building up my immunity. Plus, when I made a commitment to the 21 days of prayer, it came with fasting. <laughs> and I nearly fasted 24 hours today. I couldn't believe it. I didn't do it on purpose. I just forgot to eat lunch. Anyway, um, I was scrolling through Instagram and I ran, I ran across Toby Mac this morning on Instagram Live on his tour bus. I got to meet his band. He introduced his band. Uh, I got a tour of the bus and he shared that the song that I shared is his new song in message. It's called Promised Land. I really love the lyrics of this song. When you have read God's word cover to cover more than once, you see where this world is headed. I see so clearly where this world is headed. I see so clearly that things may get good for a little while, but it's going to be for salvation. And then Jesus is coming. We don't have a lot of time. People don't have 20, 30 years to figure out what side they want to be on. Now is the time for salvation. That was just something that I added in there. Um, you see the level of evil unfolding before your eyes and long for the promised land. A land of pure perfection, perfect beauty, love, joy, peace, and unity. A place of no differing opinions and pure harmony. Because differing opinions create more havoc these days than a lot of other things. And sometimes those differing opinions are based on absolutely nothing. But they cause more heartache. They cause more hurts. And so I long for a place where everyone is on the same page. 
everyone is on the same page. It will be such an awesome day when that happens. I have family and friends that I miss terribly, but I know that God created all for his plan and purpose, <coughs> which is more than we can imagine and hope for. If we go our own way, like the world, and I talked about that, we will never know what his plan and purpose was. We never will. If we choose our own path and go, I'm going to do it my way. This is how I feel today. I'm going to do it my way. You're never going to know what God intended for you because he's not going to give it to you. He's not. And it's sad. It's sad. I see people every day that are not living God's plan and purpose. Maybe they think they don't deserve it. Maybe they think this is better. Maybe they think, I don't want to give this up over here. But God's plan and purpose is always better. It's more fulfilling. It's full of blessings. It's always better. Until I step into the promised land, I will be running this cross-country race of hills and valleys, clinging to the hand of Jesus. Because we are, Jesus did not promise us this perfect place here. We are not going to have this perfect place. We're going to have exactly the opposite of what I talked about. We are living in a land of destruction, not perfection, that God is eventually going to destruct because of sin, greed, and blasphemy. And we are living in, I lost my, I'm sorry, I lost my spot. We're not living in perfect beauty. Yes, it is beautiful. This world that God created is beautiful, but it's not even going to compare to the beauty in heaven, in that promised land. And we have love and we have joy and we have peace, but it's not perfect. And it often gets interrupted by, what did I say down here? By differing opinions. Um, and often gets interrupted by worldly things and worldly views and things that come into our lives. Often. And there is no unity. There's no unity to be found right now. This country and this world is so disunified right now because it's not, its unity is not coming from God. We were once united under God and we are not now. There are many people that don't even know who God is. They haven't even heard the name of Jesus. We have kids that come to Wednesday night, not to the youth, but the younger kids. Some of them came to Wednesday night. They didn't even know who Jesus was. They don't even have a Bible in their home. So we have had generation and generation and generation of people denying God, kicking God out of their lives, choosing alcohol, choosing drugs, choosing other things over God. And they have suffered a lot. They've suffered through things that they wouldn't have had to suffer through had they made better choices. Because life boils down to choices. And I'll talk to you about the most important choice in a minute. Let me go ahead and finish this. I keep losing my spot. I will let Jesus guide me through. Are you saved today? Is Jesus your shepherd that you follow? Are you letting him lead you? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Come just as you are. You don't have to clean up your life. Come as you are. Bring your sins. Bring your sins. Everybody in the Bible 
brought all their sins, all their diseases, everything to Jesus. He has the power to break the chains of addiction. He has the power to heal. So bring everything you have. Come as you are. Admit that you're a sinner and ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only son that came to save the world. That came to save the world. I lost my voice. Uh, through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Leave the old, receive the new. God is in control forever. Jesus is the good news for all. Pres presence, testify, encourage, and shine the light of Jesus. Those are my four focuses this year. Uh, I pick focus words every year. Presence. I want to be more in the presence of God. Testify. I want to testify to God's goodness and encourage. I want to encourage others. All right. Well, it is time for a salvation message. Because I'd like to be off of here probably about the same time that I got started. I need to go... fix dinner for my child, although we have had a super late schedule today. It's been kind of crazy. Okay, let's do steps to peace with God. Steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God, but the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, John three sixteen. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have. So step two, admit the problem, our sin and separation. Sin is a separation from God. God is a holy God and he cannot look on sin. And things that were sin in the Old Testament to God are still sin today. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. We get to choose. The first man and woman chose to, obey, to disobey God and go their own willful way. We talked about going your own way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. When we choose our own way, when we choose to sin, when we tell God, hey, I've got this, uh, you know, I can handle this, that is separation from God. He is a gentleman. He is not going to barge his way into your life. If you say, no, I've got this, I'm going to do it my way, I'm going to go my own willful way, then he is not going to be as close as he would be if you are doing things his way. He's never going to hate you in your sin. He's always going to love you, but he is never going to love your sin. You cannot convince God that sin is okay because he is a holy God and he is the righteous judge that will judge all sinful. He will. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 for the wages of sin is death. 
Romans 6, 23. And people have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. They have, but we can't do it. We have no access to God except through Jesus. So if you're trying to have a relationship with God and you don't have Jesus in your heart as your Savior, you're never going to have a relationship with God. Jesus is the only path to God, and he is the only path back to God. He is the path that we follow back to the promised land. By the way, go listen to that song. It is so awesome. Um, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14:12. Your, iniqu your iniquities have made a separation between you and God, you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. There's only one. So step three, discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place and paid the penalty for our sin. Bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 5. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3 18. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8 and 6, 23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life. But each person must make a choice. Everyone has to choose. And this, this salvation through Jesus is the most important decision that you will ever make in your whole entire life. It is the most important. So step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by a personal choice. Sorry, my bangs are horrible tonight. Ah. Ah. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Revelations 3.20 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 that's what I said a while ago. I didn't use the verse, but that's what I said. There is absolutely no way to salvation except through Jesus. To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John three thirty six. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in him alone for forgiveness? And eternal life. The Bible says that the only way to find peace. That's the only way to find peace with God. So number one. Admit your need. That you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Two. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life. And trust only in Christ. Three. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Or accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So I'm going to repeat, I'm going to read these, but I'm going to leave a space too if you would like to repeat them. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I 
I now receive you into my life as my Savior, so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior tonight, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His one and only Son. And um, this is a crossway.org. I did not make this. This is crossway.org. So if you would like to grow closer to God in a relationship, then read His Word and pray every day. Read His Word every day and pray and praise. Find you some praise music. And start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis because you're going to get about to Leviticus and you're going to go, I don't know what this has to do with me. But all books are important. All books point to Jesus. All books are God-breathed, man-written, but God-breathed through the Spirit. Every word of this is truth. No matter what you hear about the Bible was changed in the 60s. I have one from 1900 in my purse. It's exactly the same as my King James Version that I have. They're exactly the same. Nobody came in and changed the Bible in 1960 and changed words. It's always been the same. So don't believe those lies because they're lies and it's just to confuse you. So, because I checked that out this afternoon. Anyway, I have my mother's Bible. I have my mother's New Testament, which is so precious to me. And it says the same thing that my Bible has. And it said that it was printed in 1900, so... There goes the 1960, because that would have been 60 years old. I don't know. Just saying. The truth is the truth. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I have a little attitude, but I have some things going on in my life that I'm dealing with. But God keeps telling me to trust Him. And God keeps giving me a peace about it. So, it's going to be all good. It's going to all work out for God's glory. Okay, well, I am going to do God's blessing for y'all, and I'm going to get off of here and go uh, fix our son something to eat. I don't know. I may feed him a little bit later because... We ate such a late lunch. We had to go get groceries. We had, I don't know, ran into craziness this afternoon. Everything was going great until, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We need peace. This nation needs peace. This world needs peace. This nation. Oh my. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Because I see a bunch of lies and confusion out there. It started way before last year. Been going on for decades. Lies, confusion, corruption. 
We got it all. We got it all. Okay. Well, I hear they have all the truth. And I look forward to all the truth coming out. I hear they have all of it. Every last bit of it. But you know what? I've heard that before. So until I see people getting arrested, I'm just going to trust God. And I'm going to trust him even when people get arrested because I'm just going to trust him. I don't trust any president. I don't trust any world leader. I only trust God. I trust God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to get me from this life to my promised land. Our promised land. Because I'm not going to be there by myself. There's going to be thousands, thousands, millions of people. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of like-minded believers that have followed God, that have followed Jesus back to God. I hope that's going to be you. I hope that will be you. I hope if you're on the broad path that you get off of it and get on the narrow path with Jesus. Because Jesus is the only way. He is the only way. All right, well, I'm going to pray. I'm not sure what I'm going to pray for. I may just pray for anybody that comes here and my friends and their families and my family. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word, God. We can just learn more and more all the time. God, you teach us. In Psalm 19, to walk in your ways, God, to walk in your statutes, and your statutes are truth, to walk in your truth, to walk in the, in the Spirit, to walk close to Jesus. God, just help us to do that. God, I pray for all my friends and their families, God. I just pray for peace, and I pray for protection and provision and blessings. I pray for guidance. I pray for my family, for peace and protection, provision for blessings and guidance by the Holy Spirit. I pray that we would be guided, all of us, by the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that uh, you would draw us closer and closer to you every day, God. I just pray that eyes would be open to truth and ears would be open to truth and their hearts would be open to truth, God. So many, many would be saved, God. Many would be saved through Jesus. God, I thank you for all things that you do for us. I thank you that Seth and I had a good school day today. And that I didn't have to punish him like yesterday. But as parents, and as you being our parent, when we don't do what's right, God, we do get punished. You do punish us. And we have to punish our children too. And even though waiting 30 minutes to turn the TV on, he survived. He survived yesterday. He kept coming in and asking me, though, if it was time. <laughs> oh, dear me. How you must laugh at us sometimes, God, when we are disobedient children. We thank you, God, for your mercy. We thank you that you bring us new blessings and mercy every day. And that your grace is sufficient. And that you are faithful, God, in all things. And that you prepared a place for us when our race has ended here. Where there is nothing but perfection as far as we can see. And there is nothing but perfection that we will feel. And that we will know. But God, until then, 
We're in a major spiritual warfare every day. God, I feel the oppression every day of this major spiritual war. And God, I know your angels are fighting on behalf of your children. Please remind us that our best fights are fought on our knees in prayer. Please remind us that we need to humble ourselves before you. We need to repent of our sins. We need to turn from our wicked ways for you to heal our land. Please help us, God, to be the children that make you proud, to be the children that will go out and will share your truth in the gospel of Jesus with everyone that we see, God that we would be the children that would be out there working this last harvest and that we would not be idle, that we would continue sharing your truth in the gospel of Jesus, that we would not back down from the ways of the world, that we would stand and that we would be loud and proud of our Christianity and of the truths that we stand on. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Pray and Share Warriors. I was on here longer than I thought I was, would be. But it's about time to feed Seth. So have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow. I will not be here tomorrow night. I will be at Youth Night at The Promise with our youth. Kind of looking forward to it. Kind of hoping it's not as hot as it was today. Uh, my air conditioner is quit working on my car. So that's something that I hope to get fixed tomorrow because it was so hot. I hate for Seth to be that hot. I can handle it. I've, I've ridden in cars with no air conditioner before. You know, I am like, I am old school, new school. And I am thankful that God created me to be old school, new school because it's easy to go back to old school and it's easy to learn new school. So Anyway, I want my air conditioner fixed, though. It's kind of the conveniences that we get used to. All right. Well, much love. Much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.